Thema presentation contains two of aspects. One is a point to consider how to decide the Linux kernel version in terms of product engineering standpoint. And uh, after that, uh, how the LTSI match such a uh, requirement. Uh, before starting my session, uh, how many of people you are uh, working for your own product? Or many, thank you very much. For to decide the Linux kernel version in the product standpoint, there are a number of aspects. First one is the technical one, and another one is stability, maintenance, and cost. So most of the product, production engineer is always looking at these aspects, now how to uh, uh, get the latest technology into their own product, and how the cost is uh, decreasing, how the maintenance, and uh, how the stability, and so on. I will uh, more, uh, talk about the more deeper in the each aspect. First one is a technical one. <clears throat> there are no, lots of technical aspects, uh, performance, and, uh, if we will use uh, uh, num some number of CPUs, how many cores in, in our CPUs, and uh, how the uh, kernel should be tuned, and uh, how many uh, amount of memory we will use, how we, but uh, it's dependent on money, and uh, how the battery life. We have uh, a number of technology of uh, 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 reducing battery life, uh, no, expanding battery life, and uh, real time and uh, connectivity and so on. To, to consider these type of aspect, uh, we need to heavily, that is always heavily depending on the kernel development in the community. So that we should look at the community, otherwise we cannot choose the right kernel version. But right now, the embedded engineer is mostly focusing on their product, or on their lifetime, on their target real estate. So that uh, these technical uh, aspects is but uh, uh, heavily depending on kernel activities so that uh, we are focusing on our project product and also looking at the uh, uh, community activities. Here is a list of uh, kernel release date and the number of files and lines. Uh, this line is the kernel version, next one is release date and number of files in uh, 3.8 becomes uh, 41 thousands of files. And the number of lines becomes 16.4 uh, main lines of code. Most of uh, each is uh, uh, increasing uh, 1.4, about 1.4 percent of source code is increasing. That's mostly uh, 200 kilo lines of code. And for the files, it's about 500. For example, here and here is about 500, and here and here is 500. So, how many days each uh, kernel, will re kernel are releasing? Here is a uh, graph. Uh, vertical is a number of date, and uh, here is a kernel version. 3.2 was released in uh, early uh, last year. So last year, the each kernel was released less than 80, maybe 70 days, and someone is uh, about 60 days. So within 60 days, 200 of files, uh, 200 kilo lines of code are uh, increased. So the kernel is really rapidly growing. So. Uh, looking at these kind of uh, growing. Otherwise, uh, we are not be able to choose right kind of technology into our own product. That's one thing. Let's go to the stability point, point of view. Um, there, uh, Mr. Munakata is, uh, <clears throat> he was have, a, he have a LTSI session in 1 p.m. He said, Older kernel is not always stable because it's not wine. 
Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's not, one is always uh, old one is good, but the uh, uh, common is not so much. But the uh, latest one is not always stable. Why? The kernel development is always release early and release often. So the experimental feature is always included in the latest kernel version. And uh, many developers are reviewing and changing the code uh, so that uh, uh, some uh, problem are always fixed in the latest kernel version. And also, uh, solving the problems are developing and developing features are always for the latest kernel version. But uh, we will use production kernel is a slightly older version. So how the backporting is, uh, how, what kind of feature should be backported to the uh, production kernel? That's another point. Oh, sorry. That this is a summary. For products, we need to backport the latest feature to the production kernel. And we need to watch the development community to understand what is happening. So the how the experimental feature becomes uh, more stable in uh, 60 days in, uh, in some version. So what uh, yeah. version is uh, stable is uh, very important. But to do that, we should watch the Linux kernel. That's, that's a point. Third one is the maintenance. There are a number of bugs we will find after the kernel release in the community. And also, number of security programs will be also found at the latest kernel version. That all such problems are fixed in the latest kernel version. So, we are using slightly older uh, kernel version. So we should watch the community and every bounce and the security fix should be backport to the production kernel. This is, if you lose the backport, your product includes security hole and bounce, that maybe becomes a company's risk. That's another point. So we should watch the uh, bank fix and the security fix, that's uh, very, very important for the product, so production aspect. Another uh, maintenance issue is in-house patches. I have a number of discussion in my company's embedded team and also outside of companies of embedded team. Uh, that's the background of this presentation. Everyone have own changes in, in as in-house code. So uh, mostly uh, development is uh, tie, uh, uh, how engineers have a very heavy pressure to uh, complete the development within the days, within the time target days. So sometimes fix and fixes and bugs are uh, other nice features, but uh, most of such patches is holding inside of, my, of that companies. The kernel development is moving. On the other hand, kernel development is moving very fast and changing its code. So in case of new product development, in-house code may not be able to apply to the latest kernel version. That's a problem. I have I made some uh, process like this. Why every single in-house patches? If a patch cannot apply to the target kernel, then someone needs to investigate the reason and revise the patch for target kernel and test it. But things are very easy, sim maybe simple, but uh, actually it's not so much. In the investigation, reason may not depend on for both, may depend on for both in-house patch and the kernel. Kernel is changing every day. And also, uh, in-house patch is uh, looking at just the solver program for the uh, single product. So investigation need to see both in-house patch and also kernel itself. 
And in some case, engineer who wrote the part is not in the team. So the engineer needs to ask someone, but there are no people are there. So the engineer needs to find out the solution by themselves to do that, read the kernel, and also read the in-house part. That's a heavy work. And rewrite the kernel, rewrite the part. To, uh, but uh, writing the code is not so much hard. But uh, who one else checks the correctness? The engineer needs to understand, deeply understand, what the kernel is moving and uh, why the uh, in-house part is written. And uh, finally, he needs to create the test environment again. In some uh, trivial case, create a test environment is so much hard. So this seems, uh, you, you may already understand, this seems uh, uh, similar or more than creating a single part. That's a hard work. And, uh, among, and also, patch porting work continued for number of in-house patches. If the it's, uh, patch is one or two, it's OK. But maybe some, in some case, 100 of patch, that, that's so hard. So I summarize that these patch porting work continue for further products uh, in-house uh, whenever in-house patches exist. So the solution, what is the solution? That is sending patch, in-house patch, to the upstream. After merging upstream, it is so easy. You are not necessary to take care about such porting work. Okay. And fourth one is the cost. Cost is divided by uh, these type of things. Development cost, maintenance cost, hardware product cost, sales and marketing, and so on. At least I discussed uh, about uh, some development and maintenance. The development cost includes a specific application or middleware development, tuning, and a specific driver development, and also patch porting, as I mentioned. And also maintenance costs include back porting, bug and security fixes. These two are uh, at some amount of work. So uh, development is. Uh, Currently, not depending on uh, uh, kernel development, but uh, actually, product development is deeply depending on how engineers are participating in the community. For example, what's the development status? What the technology is uh, evolving in the latest kernel? What is the stable version? Is that now what part of technology should be backporting to the production kernel? How the bug and security fix pro programs are fixed, and how, or when is a nice timing to backport that feature, that patches. And in-house code need to be merged into upstream, decrease the development cost by using these type of things. And finally, share the invest information among the engineer. We also decrease the development cost. Right now, there are not so much place to uh, share the uh, embedded uh, program. Uh, and uh, hey, this is, uh, I found uh, some program. And is there anyone uh, have a, a same uh, program and uh, have uh, any solution? And uh, that type of uh, uh, place is not, not right now, not there right now. This type of uh, uh, thoughts we created LTSI. We have uh, three of key aspects. One is uh, uh, provide uh, industry managed kernel and maintain long term stability. Second one is provide a common place for embedded industry to share information among industry people. The third one is uh, provide a place to support upstream activity so that. Embedded engineer can easy to send parts to upstream. We would like to help about that. 
I will uh, talk about some more details on the three aspects. One is the uh, uh, industry managed kernel. LTSI was established 2011. We are already uh, defined uh, two of uh, kernel. And uh, we define the common kernel every year and maintain for two years. Yeah, that's based on long-term kernel as a base. The, so that long-term kernel is uh, uh, automatically uh, backport, not automatically, but uh, Greg is uh, uh, working so hard <laughs> and backported to the uh, community LTS. But uh, such uh, bank fix and security fix from upstream are automatically included to LTSI. So you are not necessary to take care about uh, backporting bank fix and security fix for your own production kernel. And we will add some additional patches, which is uh, sometimes not in the uh, upstream. Because LTSI is uh, some type of distribution like Red Hat or uh, Suze and Ubuntu. We will add some special features if some strong requests come to LTSI. But LTSI is just looking at the kernel, please understand, not, not the whole distribution. And after two years down finished, possible to take over maintenance for more long term. <clears throat> for example, uh, automotive guys are asking us, how we, our lifetime is 10 years or more, <laughs> how, we, <laughs> how we can use LTSI. So we are uh, discussing with them how to do that. But uh, maintain a longer term kernel, you need to uh, have the skill to an uh, understanding uh, what is the uh, uh, community is doing, and then uh, some industry guys understand, uh, participate the community to get the skill to maintain these type of things. Then they can uh, take over the for more longer term uh, development, uh, no uh, maintenance. Here is a list of uh, community long-term kernel and its consumers. 2627 is uh, slightly old. 32 is still using Red Hat. And the Threads was 311, SP1 was used as 2632. Uh, 34 was Wind River Linux. 2635 is used by Gingerbread. That's still in the industry. And the 3.0 LTSI uses this. And Andro Android ice cream sandwich is based on 3.0. And the SUSE was changed its kernel for SP2. 3.2 is used by uh, Debian. And so the Ubuntu is also using 3.2 kernel. We, we really wanted to discuss with Ubuntu guys how, to, how about using LTSI, <laughs> but the 3 not yet. The 3.4 uh, LTSI is using. And some of uh, Jelly Bean is uh, used a uh, 3.4 kernel. So right now, 3.0 and 3.4 is using LTSI. If you will use uh, LTSI for your own production kernel, that will uh, greatly decrease your development cost. And the uh, second one is uh, common place. As LTSI provides a place to share information and experience among the industry. We have mailing list, and we can easy to discuss uh, each other. And uh, we will have an open workshop to share status among the industry. The open workshop can, is uh, everyone can uh, join us and uh, uh, speak your own program and how to resolve the problem. In, in some cases, such program is not easy to send email, so that we will provide this type of face-to-face uh, -face meeting to share the program among the industry. And also, some more deeper program need to discuss face-to-face. -face. We establish industry contact meeting. It's the ICM for a deeper, more deeper face-to-face -face discussion. In some case, uh, uh, industry guys don't want it to uh, ec uh, expand the information outside of industry. 
uh, ICN is useful. And uh, again, share the information will re reduce the development cost. That's another point. <clears throat> That's the point. Actually, we will have open workshop for tomorrow, 3 p.m. at the first room in this floor. We will cover these type of topics, brief update of LTSI, update from a partner project with the Octo, discussion after uh, release patch acceptance policy, and a super long term support, and the next release, about the next release. So please join if you are interested in LTSI, the 3 p.m. tomorrow. <coughs> And the third one is the support upstream activities. Uh, okay. Some of the developer is already understanding how to send patch to upstream, but uh, uh, in my uh, experience, not so much people are using uh, community and sending patch to the community because the mostly the sending patch to the communities, the targeting a latest kernel version, and the uh, uh, engineers looking at uh, their own production kernel. So that's a gap. And also, how to send patch is uh, some, there are some rules and uh, uh, need to understand before sending patch. In our case, uh, some of our engineer uh, send patch to us with a, a wrong signature that is not good, and uh, with uh, some wrong format, but each of patches uh, are checked from our maintainer, and uh, you are not necessary to put these type of things, and uh, you should uh, code coding by this kind of rule, and so on. So uh, sending patch to LTSI is uh, uh, getting run, run from uh, how to send patch to upstream. And so uh, we will provide a suggestion how the patch can be merged into a stream and a pre review and discussion for proposed patch to be merged. And uh, many of the discussion underway for both open and closed uh, point of view. Uh, actually, many of uh, uh, <coughs> uh, engineers heavily depending on SOC version. SOC have also an in-house patch we are discussing with the SOC vendors how about open up their own in-house patch or merge into LTSI. That will dec greatly decrease your, our development cost. And uh, actually, a uh, uh, number of uh, companies engineer like uh, Sony or Toshiba or some other companies engineer sending patch to LTSI and get suggestion uh, from LTSI then uh, they are getting much more understanding how to send patch to upstream without any money. <laughs> that's, that's good. So how, uh, how about your case, send patch to ups, uh, our LTSI? And again, merging patch to upstream is also reduce the cost of each company. Not our own uh, cost. That's your own cost. My presentation becomes uh, uh, some more uh, slides. Uh, we will have, we have LTSI use case program. We would like to expand use case of LTSI. We would like to ask every engineer to port LTSI to your preferred operating system, like Android, CyanogenMod, Firefox, Gen2, OpenWRT, XBMC, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, OpenSUSE, Forum. If you, we will help you activity with porting, providing board and hardware, and that will be used by yourself after the porting finished. So this is not a giveaway, but uh, it's a good op opportunity to port for you. And, uh, you need to write your porting report to eLinux Wiki, and uh, you need to send patch to LTSI mailing list if you have changed. 
details can be discussed at the LTSR booth, 6 p.m. for today. Okay. If you are interested in uh, this activity, please come to our booth. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, the board is right now uh, mostly uh, Raspberry Pi. So if you are interested in Raspberry Pi, and uh, please come to our booth. Hey, yeah, this is the uh, last page, uh, how you can uh, participate in LTSI. Follow the Twitter at uh, Linux LTSI. We have web page and mailing list and Git tree right here in the host from uh, Linux Foundation. Okay. That's all my uh, presentation. If you have any question, please ask me. Yes, please. Sorry, I... Ah, yeah, next kernel version will be decided uh, in the next, uh, tomorrow's open workshop, and uh, finally will be decided in maybe uh, uh, May or June time frame. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, how can we uh, send a uh, high patch to our society? We just send to the mailing list or uh, in some list, or other? Yeah, just send patch to mailing list. And uh, please come to booth and uh, we can discuss uh, initially. Uh, and uh, how can we come to the booth? Ah, the booth will be around this uh, floor. I think you are necessary to read the document in the under the kernel source code documentation directory. There are a rule of coding style or any of such materials are there already there. You are you are uh, anyway you can read such uh, document and. Is there any opinion from a maintainer? <laughs> he have a number of parts uh, as a workaround, and uh, uh, but uh, according to the coding style. So how uh, such parts can be merged? Uh,
More details can be discussed in a, a, outside of my <laughs> session. Is there any other one? Actually, uh, it's ongoing. Yeah, three dot o is uh, picked uh, from uh, some some Japanese company. And uh, three dot four is uh, uh, mostly for jelly bean. So just only uh, full of LTSI is not integrated, but uh, some piece of LTSI is integrated into the production kernel. No, here is a uh, uh, community's long term kernel. And uh, we will. Use the LTS kernel, not the LTSI kernel. Not the LTSI. Yeah. But the LTSI includes another patches, not, it, not, not in the uh, community's LTS, so that both kernels are uh, cherry picked, patch, patches are cherry picked to uh, production kernel. Based on uh, community's LTS kernel, we will add. We are adding some other patches. That's the LTSI kernel. Uh, she asked uh, which tree will be used for the LTS kernel. LTS kernel is placed on uh, kernel.org. LTS.com. Uh, uh, kernel.org. Kernel.org. Yes. That's a community's uh, long term support kernel. And uh, we are adding some patches on top of LTS. And that is LTSI kernel. And uh, it's uh, uh, the place is uh, right here. Yeah. 